Morning, everybody. Or afternoon now. Um, anyone here? Uh, zero customers. So you can all go now. Um, anyone here? Zero shareholders. Oh, who got the best price? Can I shout them out? How much? How much? Two cents five. It's pretty good. Anyone do better than that? Eighty cents. Oh, you're in the size. That's all right. <laughs> so how'd you buy them at eighty? Anyone else? It's still cheap. Go and buy some. Um, so um, I see you're having quite a bit of fun. You, know, you guys have probably seen the news. So um, you, just to give you a quick update on zero, so we're about uh, we are about 600 people. Um, for half of our staff now are um, outside of New Zealand. So we really are a global business. We um, uh, just opened up a big office in San Francisco. Um, we, that'll actually hold about two or three hundred people. Uh, I think the, um, the monthly rent of that is more than our flash building down in Wellington for a year. So when we sort of signed the lease, I was throwing up in the corner. Uh, we just also um, opened up a new customer care centre in Denver. So probably try to, uh, try, probably try to schedule a trip over there sort of most Februarys. Uh, we've got a little office um, in New York. Just come back from um, the UK. We've got a pretty big office in Milton Keynes now. We've got about 60, 70 people there now. And just opened up a small office in London as well. So we, so we have, um, I think, 14 offices around the place. And what's amazing is when we um, go and travel around the offices, that we have really, um, uh, we have really kept this global culture. So uh, half, half of the new zeros have come in over the last year. So we've added 300 staff in the last year. And a big focus for us uh, is to uh, create that culture. And it's really exciting that a lot of the uh, New Zealandness that makes us special has actually translated. So you know, people in San Francisco are very different to, different to people in uh, the north of England, but yet we've still got these really um, uh, these really core values. So it's been very exciting doing that. So we're up to about 200,000 customers now. We think we're probably the leading online accounting software provider in the world. And sure, it claims about 400,000, but we think that's everyone that's driven past the building. In terms of real paying customers, we think we're, we're either um, a very close number two or all or already number one. Um, we, um, we've processed now, I think, about $300 billion worth of transactions. So when you think about the significance of this, data sitting on individual PCs isn't really all that interesting. But when you get it into one, one, core, um, one core system, then it's super interesting. So we're starting to get this just amazing insights into small business data. And the vision as we go through over the next few years is to give all sorts of real-time benchmarking, just get really good data back to small businesses. We sort of think we're near the end of the beginning, so we've been going for a long time. Uh, but it actually, the investment we're making to do this is, is, is absolutely huge. We've probably spent well over um, $100 million to date. But that's what it takes to, to build an application of the size and scale that we're doing. Um, so there's lots of other software companies that will you know, um, uh, build small amounts of technology. But our thing was we saw this massive opportunity and we raised enough money to have a really good global go at it. Um, so we think sort of by maybe the middle of next year, um, you know, right now probably 80% of businesses can use zero. Uh, but a big thing for us is to finish off all the horizontal features. So all the things you do in desktop software, we should be able to sort of by the middle of next year, uh, pretty much any business should be able to use zero. Um, and um, uh, so we, when we kind of, uh, uh, as soon as we've done that, then we kind of think we kind of tick the box into what we plan to do in terms of uh, traditional um, accounting software. And what we're super excited about is now really starting to change the game. So the way that we feel about what we're doing in the industry now is we're a bit like um, uh, we're really starting to get on the foils. And we're seeing that um, we can, uh, we're absolutely changing the game. So before, uh, w before we started, uh, you know, one of our first cool features was getting uh, banking information directly into um, accounting software so that you could do your bank rec each morning. That's now a standard feature that most accounting software does. So, so we've already changed the industry globally. And what we're really focused on now that we've done the boring bits is to, or getting close to finishing the boring bits, is really changing the game away from just the uh, recording of transactions and how do we leverage that small businesses are all connected to each other. They're connected to large businesses, connected to banks, connected out uh, of government. H how do we actually uh, um, improve business using technology? So the sort of things that we think about is, you know, how do we get your accounting software driving business leads to you? 
you know, we have a whole network of people, you know, 200,000 people spending money. So if there's people on the network who, um, are, who are making products and services, surely we could date those things up. So, so while zero has been, um, you know, it's kind of exciting watching the rise to date, we feel like we're kind of um, near the end of kind of doing the boring things and, and uh, the next sort of five to ten years, we actually really think we're going to be changing the game. So we're having quite a bit of sport doing that. One of the big things that's happened and one of the reasons um, we're here this afternoon is actually sort of online accounting is, is, um, has kind of happened. So people who aren't on online accounting yet really haven't seen it or um, you know, maybe they've got some advanced requirements, but actually most people now, if you look at, um, at, at uh, uh, people going on to software, most uh, new people and, and most uh, new installs are, are of online software. So that's absolutely happened and there's a whole lot of benefits for doing that. Uh, what we think is super exciting now is the, is the focus on online accounting is starting to fade away because it's sort of done or it's certainly on its way to being done. And what we're seeing now is um, a huge investment happening in these other business applications that can leverage the online accounting engine which is already there. So that's why I think this afternoon is kind of exciting because we're into the next phase now where you'll see a, a bunch of other great products that don't have to build a full accounting engine. They can actually concentrate and build really great line of business applications that actually make your boat go faster. So you'll, start, you'll see a really good sample of those uh, now. We have about 300 now, you know, 300 huge number of applications that connect into zero. And so this is a massive change. Before we noticed that um, small businesses didn't spend 10 grand trying to link software together on premise because that's always a bad experience. Now what you're able to do is sort of pick commodity products and then go and spend a bit of money on really good line of business applications. So this has just never been available to small businesses before and the quality of these applications are absolutely huge. So, um, so I'm really excited you guys are here to see uh, from some great partners and, and you'll see some good examples of that. And if you go onto the Xero, um, uh, the Xero website, you'll find that there's literally hundreds of these applications now. And the neat thing is we're leading this from New Zealand. I think, you know, maybe because we got started and, and we've been able to develop the market here, um, you know, some of the uh, New Zealand companies, like Vendor's an example, you know, based out of Auckland, they're following us around. They are, we're at our uh, Xerocon in Sydney, Xerocon in San Fran, Xerocon in London, and we're just so excited seeing these other great New Zealand software companies grow. The other thing we've seen is that the world has fully become online and a lot of, um, you know, a lot of our accounting partners even are starting to provide services offshore. And about uh, five years ago, um, as, my, um, as my first child turned five and was ready for school, we made the decision to move to the provinces. So, so I live in Havelock North now, so even though our business is 600 people, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not actually there. So Tuesday, Wednesdays, uh, we try to have the senior team in Wellington to get together, but the uh, reality is, with, with so many officers, I'm always in the wrong place. So we made the decision to, um, to get the New Zealand lifestyle, move to the provinces, and then engineer our lives, you know, maybe cost 20 grand worth of airfares, uh, uh, to, to actually live in the regions and work completely globally. And that's been awesome. So I think, you know, and when we started this business, having done a few software companies before, our goal was, to, and sort of certainly the sort of, um, you know, some of the early people in, was to build a sustainable business where you could have all the benefits of living in the provinces, be a good parent, you know, drop your kids off at school, pick them up, go for a swim, ride your bike, and do some big work. And so what we've been really actively trying to do is to understand technology and understand how you can actually really build these global businesses uh, from New Zealand. And, you know, talking to a lot of people in Whanganui and Palmerston North, um, and, and through the provinces as we travel around, you know, there's been a real, um, what, what I found moving into Hawke's Bay was that people in the provinces tend to be quite passive about um, exporting and uh, yet we're seeing all this expenditure and investment drifting towards Auckland, which we think is kind of nuts. So one of the uh, discussions we've been having with the local mayors is how do we actually start to champion the provinces because um, things are really starting to fall our way. We're getting good infrastructure in the provinces. We already have cheap housing. What we're seeing in our own business is that um, uh, um, if you compare labour rates to Australia, New Zealand workers are now less than 60% of their equivalent worker in the Australian market. So what this means is any um, people intensive job is much better done here. And um, you know, as we've talked to um, 
uh, people through the provinces, you know, there's lots of sort, of sort of economic development that's been passive. What we're starting to do now is get much more active about that. So, um, for example, we have a lot of people in our customer experience centre, and these are sort of 45 to $75,000 plus jobs. They're not low value um, uh, jobs. We're just trying to sort of reset passwords. These are when our, our customers come in and we want to give them a great experience and our customer experience people need to go through and solve a complex problem. So we're getting these wonderfully talented people who really care about customers with great social engagement, um, you know, working globally uh, over the phone and over the web, doing Skype calls, doing webinars, and actually engaging with people all over the world. And this actually is the future of work, and we're really good at it. Um, I think New Zealanders, as generalists, uh, excel at this sort of problem solving. So one of the things that we've been doing in some of the provinces or talking to, to mayors and economic development groups around are around having sort of active strategies to go and chase that work. So like a good example of that um, um, with uh, Nelson Mayor Aldo and Lawrence uh, Yule um, in Hastings, we said, well, you know, how do, we, how do we exploit this? So rather than waiting for someone to come and open up a contact centre, uh, they're not going to do that. We, we bundled um, an offering up. We looked at what a uh, you know, fully loaded person would cost with you know, buildings you know, and their, their per metre charge, their annual charge. We looked at the demographics. You know, um, uh, Palmerston's fantastic. It's got um, universities. It's got a you know, bunch of young people coming through. You know, it's got a really good population. You guys are already experts in doing call centres. There's quite a few here. Um, but in Hastings, we don't see there's hardly any um, at all. So we've, so we've bundled those up into a clear offering that we can take to market. And then we decided we would partner uh, with Genai because Genai um, uh, does that sort of work. They understand about telecommunications, about phone systems. They understand about connecting through Citrix over the internet to enterprise software. And uh, they have salespeople already talking to CIOs and operations um, managers in Sydney and Melbourne. So we bundled it up and, and got them to go out and actually ask for the business. So I think that's a, uh, what we see, and one of the, think, the reasons that Zero has been so successful is we haven't been passive, we've been actively driving forward. And I think in terms of um, promoting the provinces and driving the provinces forward, having an active strategy, getting out there and making your own luck uh, is absolutely what, haps, what has to happen. Because everybody, every, uh, in every country we do, they're all putting in broadband, they're all trying to get this sort of work. And um, what we see, and you know, especially um, spending a lot of time in the States, we have this unbelievable lifestyle, this incredibly low cost of leisure. And I think the magic of, um, of, of having a New Zealand provincial lifestyle with doing big global work is actually really, really cool. And you know, technology I is absolutely making that possible. So um, you know, we think it's, a, it's an incredibly exciting time. I think we're a good case study of, of really going for it and hopefully that's giving, um, giving other people confidence, but we're super excited that we're seeing services-based businesses using technology like Google Hangouts and all those sort of things to actively export now as well. And if we all do that, then we end up uh, with better schools and hospitals. Um, so I've been kind of ranting a bit. Um, uh, I can talk about lots of stuff, but love to know if anyone's got any questions and we can maybe drill down into a few things. At the back. Well, so the first bit was boring, what? <laughs> yeah, well, I was going to walk up. Yeah. Um, on the Wall Street Journal this morning, can you supply a few summarizes with their new units? Got a problem. We have an emergency bus that's not full. It's a price called one quarter a tatty to walk you through your problem. Now, with most of us, with zero or whatever, we, we get into this because usually our staff Yeah, so, so we're absolutely doing that now. So, you know, a lot of people say, why don't you have an 0800 number? Um, because that uh, delivers a terrible experience. So if you're going to provide a, um, you know, a number where customers can dial in, then you've got to try to work out who's the, you know, how many staff do you need, and you've got no idea. And then you end up trying to push it to the lowest cost call center, and you're doing a whole bunch of triage. What we realized was that a much better model was to get our uh, customers to um, lodge an issue through the app, and then we have a queue, 
and then that we, we do a lot of triage and then we'll either um, make contact back as soon as we can or we'll phone, phone the customer back having done a whole lot of work. And um, even though it was a bit of a mindset shift, we knew, you know, like people hate MYOB help because you can just ring in and, and sort of who do you talk to? They have no idea about your problem. So when you're building these businesses, you've got to be very disciplined about having the, uh, the right business model. So technology allows us to do those sort of personal things at scale. So we were just at a small um, accounting firm and they were having a few problems and fortunately we were in town so uh, we got Bailey to put our super cape on and just go in and parachute. Uh, but that, you know, effectively that's three or four hundred dollars worth of time and it just doesn't scale for small business. You know, so, what, so the answer to that is we need to teach that person to get used to doing a Google Hangout or a Skype or attending a webinar for training. And, um, and if you think about it from what I was saying before, uh, you could be providing that service um, uh, from Palmerston North to anywhere in the world. So Apple ran a program out last year uh, where they, they recruited a bunch of home workers who, um, who are providing exactly that sort of service if you get stuck with your Apple product. So anywhere in the world you can be providing that service. So we're seeing these great location independent opportunities and I think it's for the regions to jump onto that, you know, because you're going to be the lowest cost workforce because your overheads will be lower. Doesn't mean you take less uh, take home pay, but location doesn't matter. So hopefully that turned your question into what I wanted to say. Yeah, so the question is, were we always going to be global? Um, no, actually, when I sold my last business, I was thinking um, uh, I was just going to do, I wanted to do online accounting software, and I thought Australia and New Zealand would be fine, and that would be good, and I wouldn't have to travel around the world, it would be really good. And then I was on the board of Trade Me, and we sold that for quite a lot of money. And so Sam had more than me, so then it was like, damn it, we're going to have to do it globally. <laughs> so then we decided zero would be global from day one. He actually sent me a... Um, a note of a concession the other day and said, damn it, you actually won. So it felt kind of good. Um, so, um, so, so, yes, the question is, what do you mean by beautiful um, accounting software? So, so that's exactly right. Beautiful is an unexpected word, so there's a bit of marketing there. But we went from, you know, when we started designing Xero, we went and spoke to a lot of people, and we found that people hated doing um, accounting. They hated doing the books. The whole thing just annoyed them, yet business should be fun. And then a few years later now, and quite often, you'll see people saying, uh, accounting is now sexy. I'm having a lot of fun doing my books. So by doing great design and not trying to just... Um, take what was done done in the past and um, and then replicate that online by actually relooking again and designing experiences for uh, delight. We get this emotional reaction, which is just amazing. So people love zero. They think it is beautiful. That wasn't our word. We kept we we we, uh, we kept hearing it. So what we've actually done is we've um, just testing some above the line marketing in Australia at the moment and the campaign is do beautiful business. So it's a hyper-local campaign, it's in, um, uh, it's in bus shelters, it's uh, down where posters, where all the sort of music posters are, a very local campaign, it's, it's on radio, and it's about doing beautiful business and what does it mean for them. And beautiful business is about, you know, highly ethical, great values, paying your bills on time, uh, delighting customers. So um, we love that because it's just a different uh, you know, we think it's it's an emotional thing, and small business is an emotional thing. So I remember when we were doing Aftermail, our last business, and you know we were selling email archiving software. I remember two or three times you'd be at a large government department, and they'd say, "Great job, we're about to send you um, um, an order. Uh, just walk back to the office; it'll be there on the fax." So five days later, it's still not there. So you're looking at the CFO across the pillow at two in the morning, explaining the bank now owns another wing of the house. Um, so, you know, business is a very personal thing and we love that we do get this emotional connection and I think that's just great design and New Zealand is really good at that. Yeah. 
Yeah, so when we mapped the, mar when we mapped the market, I think this is an interesting, um, an interesting thing for all businesses, is technology uh, just gives a huge amount of change. So the technology that allows zero to exist is there's this massive economic, um, uh, um, everything's different when you move to the cloud. So under the old model, you used to have to um, uh, put boxes on shelves, so you have to win the retail channel, and the business model was the retailer would take half the box price for accounting software, and it was you know, maybe 500, 1,000 uh, bucks or more. Um, then you'd get your real revenue by getting support contracts, and you, then you'd earn margin by pushing support to the lowest cost call center, where the first question is, which version do you have? So uh, very hard for a competitor to come in and, and compete and win that retail channel. So if you go to Fry's in the US, it's all um, Intuit, it's all QuickBooks. Uh, if you're in the UK at Dixon's, it's all Sage. If you're in, um, in Australia, it's all MYOFB. So we, um, we, um, we figured that those companies would actually really struggle to move online. And what the cloud does is it completely changes the economics of getting to small business. That's why there's uh, so much uh, investment going on now for small business because you can afford to do that investment. Uh, because the, you know, it's a big investment, to, you know, we run about 200 servers and over three data centers all over the world. So that's a huge, huge investment, but the marginal cost of a new customer is relatively small, so you can afford to actually get the technology out. So um, our hypothesis was the incumbents who are much bigger than us, so we're uh, at 600 people, um, MYB uh, just doing Australia and New Zealand is 1,000, Intuit in the US is 8,000, and Sage is 13,000. So everyone asks us, well, aren't eventually Sage and Intuit going to come and just take you guys out? You know, they've got all this money, they're big brand software companies. So, we, so seven years in, this is what we found. Uh, big companies really can't move, so it's hard to think of any examples of where uh, even a, a very sophisticated global technology company has changed from installed desktop software to um, the cloud. Even Apple hasn't. iCloud hasn't been a success. Microsoft certainly haven't. So even if those companies with awesome balance sheets can't do it, you know, they, these um, sort of second tier uh, accounting software companies are probably going to struggle. And um, you, you actually, it's a, um, everything's different, it's a different sales model, different support model, it's a different attitude, it's different development skills. So even if they could go and, and then have the money to go and hire another two or three hundred people, um, they, they don't, they're not passionate like we are. And uh, on the web where you're updating software every sort of few weeks, uh, passion gets massively amplified. So what we've seen is, is actually the technology is creating this huge opportunity for anybody to disrupt markets. So everything's being disrupted at the moment, and the technology allows even very small companies to appear big quite fast. So you have an internet, you know, you're on social media, uh, you can very, very quickly present big. So we're a great example of where technology has disrupted an industry, and then you've got some passionate and, and, and a well-funded group of people and when we meet executives from these other companies, like, we wouldn't hire them. So big companies aren't, you know, I mean, you guys would know, you, you get into them, they're not that great, right? You know, so, um, and we, we just have more and more confidence. So, so we're not out to um, compete against uh, Intuit, we're out to make them obsolete. And uh, so we, you know, we want to drive a $20, $50 $50 billion company, that's our plan. Yeah, so um, uh, there's a question at the back there as well. So, um, uh, yeah, so, so the cloud, um, you know, the, the, the cloud just means that rather than having your data that you're managing on your own PCs uh, is, is actually now being managed professionally into a proper data center. So anyone like us who's providing a cloud service uh, needs to um, be really careful about security because if we ever lost anyone's data, it's game over. So we have the best people in the world and partners and external people checking all of that. So in terms of uh, security, it's bank level plus security and, and smart, smart, smart people, smarter than me, uh, are working really hard to make sure that that data, get, data gets lost. So I think now um, people would say that um, the cloud is more secure. What we see going into uh, small businesses is they're running on really cheap Harvey Norman PCs that hard to disk crash and normally there's a shared admin password that's on a yellow sticky on the screen. So, um, and then people take their whole financial data on their laptop, put it on the roof of their car and drive off. So, so, um, so the cloud is, is a thousand times more secure 
More importantly is business continuity because your hard disk fries. Um, if, if anything goes wrong with our system, 20 pages go off and everyone's trying to fix it. And after uh, Christchurch, we saw the difference of accounting firms that were fully in the cloud. Uh, they, they had a day off and worked at the home office and were lodging GST returns. Other firms couldn't get to their servers for six months. So um, for small businesses, the cloud is a no-brainer. You know, we've all seen Christchurch. It's nuts that you run your own servers. And you're going to save, you know, so much money. So, so we're over that. You just need to be on the cloud. There's someone right down the back there. Um, so, so what we've learned is that you can't sell anything to small business. Um, so our strategy for selling is education. And so we're doing a lot of work now. So, so it's amazing we've got the 200,000 customers, but um, that's kind of, we would call it, we've kind of been in the hand-to-hand -hand combat phase. So we've managed to get the accountants channel working. It's still a lot of hard work, and our team's been hustling now for seven years. What we now, we've realized at the conclusion of that is it's all about education. To get accountants and small businesses using business software, you have to teach them how to use it. You have to show them the value proposition. So a lot of the stuff we work, well, a big project we're working on at the moment, one's uh, called Zero TV. So we've got videos all over the place. We want to bring that into a central uh, bit of Chrome where um, uh, uh, lots of 30 to 90 second videos that allow people to immediately get to the right information. And what we should do from a marketing automation point of view is see where people are at their journey and then delight them by sending them a video just before they need it. So we'll get the sort of sort over the next three or four months, but the ideal would be, um, you know, you're about to do your first GST return two days before, you get a nice email, hey, um, here's a video showing you what you need to get ready for your accountant to do your GST. So if we're providing advice and guidance, people love that. So we're, um, our experience now is to not even try to sell stuff, we're just educating. And then the other thing we're doing um, is webinars. So webinars, al already we um, started the same sales model in California as we've done in Australia and the UK, where we put a team in Northern California and a team um, in Hollywood racing around talking to um, accountants. Already we've found in the States that uh, we get a much better response uh, to uh, the webinars we're doing. So some webinars we have 500 people on. So what we're now flipping that around, rather than having 100 salespeople doing webinars on an ad hoc basis to groups of clients, we're now creating what um, probably call something like Zero University. So you log in, you'll see a schedule, and there'll be a bunch of courses there. So the next day, you can just you know, see all the courses that you need to. And that moves the, our sales model from just being, you know, as we're chasing customers, growing salespeople, to say we're going to have 10 people that are the best online trainers we, we have. They build the curriculum. So we move the sales cost to a fixed model and then drive education. So a two-prong hit, video for instant, and then uh, webinars for guided tours. So that should mean that anybody you know, who wants to know about Zero can quickly find out things straight away or the next day see a, a nice little uh, course where they can ask questions. So the thing, what was super interesting about the small business market is nobody, there's very few other applications where anyone's actually worked out how to sell it. So um, even Salesforce, the biggest um, SaaS company or software as a service company in the world, doesn't really sell to uh, small businesses below 100 seats and certainly makes no money out of it because you can't do a one-on-one -on -one sale, you can't afford it. You know, I sometimes get these government departments phoning me up saying, oh Rod, we really like Xero, we'd love, we'd love you to come and show us how to use it. And I'm like, stop talking to me, you've already blown all the money, um, you know, we're $49 a month, I can't talk to you, put the phone down. Oh. And then um, uh, they have to go online and do it or talk to um, an accountant. So what we've done is we've put our sales resources into getting accountants online, because each accounting partner has 500 customers. So our hypothesis is that actually accounting is really the beachhead application to getting small businesses online. And then so our channel and what we spend most of our money on is getting accountants on board and giving them education and providing them tools. And then what we're, then what we're seeing now with the add-on partners, some of you hear from shortly, is that we're becoming their channel because now the customers are online and the accountants are online, they can just tag along. So we're seeing, so we're creating this accountants channel and then the add-ons are using Zero as a channel getting through. So that's really exciting for us because then we can, with our, our, our large base of customers, there's other services we can put through as well uh, and, and do that in a very cost-effective way. So it's pretty exciting. That's why we think we're really just at the beginning of zero and you should all go and buy some shares. You see what I did there? Yeah. 
Well, yeah, well, we'd like to. Um, yeah. Actually thinking about a smaller black boat at the moment, but we'll talk to about that later. Yeah. So you're probably not using it to its full potential. And um, what we're doing with the education campaign is, um, uh, is, is we'll be able to see what you've done and tell you what, what you need to, do, need to know next. So when we think about marketing automation, we don't just think about getting you across the line with sales. We now we've got quite a bit of analytics in the system. We've run a whole lot of sort of numbers. So a shock for us was a customer is not really a customer till they've been there for a year. So if you've been using zero for a year, you're very unlikely to churn out. In fact, the churn goes to nothing. So then, okay, that's interesting. So we think about what's our life cycle of customers. So you're a prospect, then you're in a trial, so you're starting to play with the demo, and then you put your own data in, then you put your credit card in, so you're um, a newbie, and then we need to educate you through all the features. So you know, start off with bank reconciliation, then if you haven't done online invoicing, you absolutely should be doing that. Um, and then we should also be able to see customers that are at risk. So if somebody hasn't done a bank rec for six weeks, oh, they're in trouble, so we, we should then be nudging them to come back. So, so what we're doing, we started off very much being a product company about writing a whole lot of features, and now um, we're thinking much more about how do we become a marketing automation and education company. And um, even for if we lose some people for, um, you know, the end of the life cycle is uh, somebody might even drop off for some reason. So how do we keep in touch with those people in case their business has gone bust and we want them to come back? So, so um, that's what's exciting about what we're doing now. We're creating these new jobs that didn't really exist in New Zealand before, which are not just hardcore software development, but like anthropologists that are looking at data to try to understand the different species of customers that we have and then put um, the right education strategies, measure it, and then you know, do a whole lot of testing. So it's super exciting. Our business just, um, in all the challenges, you know, we just find these new things that, that we're doing, which is pretty cool. Um, yes, yeah, so we're, we're doing the, um, all the groundwork to deliver fantastic benchmarking because we have so much data. Uh, but that's a long-term journey to get the data cleaned up because everyone's on a different chart of accounts and all that sort of stuff. So a lot of the work we're doing with the accountants now is to drive their productivity uh, so that they can spend more time uh, working on the business proactively than just doing compliance. So um, part of the work that we're doing with our reporting for accountants that small business customers wouldn't see is rather than accountants um, writing reports on every client with a different chart of accounts, they're linking them to what the things actually are and then writing template reports over a standard set of industry codes. What that does is effectively crowdsource the cleansing up of all those chart of accounts, so then we should be able to have really good benchmarking. So over the course of a few years, that data will get better and better. Now we, we would never sell people's data because it's not ours, it's our customers. What we would do then is invite people to opt in to anonymous benchmarking groups. So we might say, hey, you're a tourism operator operating um, in, in the central North Island. There's 50 of you. Would you like to voluntarily share your data? So at the end of your P&L, you might see that you're having a 4% revenue growth, and you're like, no, that's not so good. But the industry around your peers is only 2%, so you're actually doing OK. So that's where we see it going, but it actually takes quite a few years to get all the data cleansed up to do that, but um, you know we're starting to get there. Well, we've been updating the software every three or four weeks, so it might be time to come back and have a look. If you're doing a heavy stock, we're not there yet. That's the last big thing that we need to do, and. Hopefully by second quarter next year, we should be pretty close with that. But like purchase orders comes out next month, um, then quotes is the next thing we're working on. So it's just, you know, there's always, it's, if you're trying to build horizontal software to fit every business, it's a massive build and, um, you know, it just takes time. So we think we're almost there. And uh, if it doesn't work for you, don't come on. We don't want you upset. Just come back when we have all the features. Um, so you just keep checking in. Well, you should talk to your accountant. I know some good ones. Well, um, like all things, all things seem to be going pretty well. Um, what, what's next for Lakeside? Um, so, um, 
No, I, yeah, I really worry about my weight sometimes. Um, <laughs> no, um, no the, um, the, so the, the things that worry us, if we lost somebody's data, it's game over. So we spend a huge amount of money to make sure that's okay. Our actually biggest constraint is hiring talented people. So, um, you know, we're adding new offices so we can recruit and, and more pools of people. So we've got plenty of capital and we could actually go faster if we could hire more people. So I'm desperately so short of QA people, quality assurance test people. Um, if anybody wants a career in QA, that's a massive opportunity. It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and, and um, also uh, developers. What's in, that, in most New Zealand tech companies, it's going to be, there's a massive, there'll be a massive shortage on those for 10 years. The new things that are happening is um, we're getting some really, um, uh, there's some new jobs we're seeing. So these, you know, big, 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 big data marketing and you know, driving deep insights into volumes of data. So we've never had big volumes of data to do things with before. So, um, and a lot of, even, in, even around the world, this is all kind of new. So we are finding people with a bit more experience, but actually there are these whole new types of jobs that just didn't exist before. So we could, we're making up a lot of stuff as we go along, and we're just finding these new jobs. Like we actually said, we need a marketing anthropologist. I made that up, and I think someone's writing a job spec for it. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. Sorry to cut you off. That's right. Ooh, if, uh, if everyone could just join me, please, in uh, thanking Rod for uh, presenting here today. Thank you.